New Delhi, India, November 2006. Ten US citizens arrive in India to begin a nine-day tour of some of the most famous sites in Asia. None of them have visited the country before, and most of them have never been away from the Americas. Amongst the group, aged 16 to 65, are a businessman and his son, a biochemist, a psychiatric nurse, a couple of horse trainers, and an aspiring actress. It's like a 10 day trip. We'll be going around Rajasthan, starting from Pushkar, Jaipur, Agra. Then we'll be going a little bit central of India. So it will be a new experience for them. And I think I try to make them feel that they're comfortable and to make them see real India. Let, let me take it. Let me take it. I take it. In the first seat. The group will be visiting the Rajasthani Desert, the Taj Mahal, the Ganges at Varanasi, and the famous Kama Sutra temples at Kajiraho. Although the traditional tourist activities of sightseeing, photography, and shopping are high on the agenda, this group are also searching for something in the higher plane. These are tantric tourists. And this is a tantric tour bus. Conceiver of the trip and group leader is Laurie Handers, straight out of New York City. As long as people are enjoying their body and their sexuality, they really can't be controlled. I got this tantra thing. I heard about tantra that was for us was only sex. It, well, it feels that way when you but go. I think it's all about sex. That's what it feels. That's what it sounds like when you first go. We eat with our hands, and we can eat off various body parts. And the um, men rotate around. I've been doing Tantra for about 10 years. I started um, with a workshop back with Lori um, in the beginning. I um, nicknamed myself the Tantric Virgin because I've never taken any of her classes. But Helen did. Helen did. did it one day the week before. It's quite strange. <laughs> Yeah, I did. In my course is the only course on the planet that I know that men can be mothers and give birth. You know, I'm almost crying now when I think about it. And uh, it changes them changes the men, it changes the women. Welcome to um, Tantra Tour, the heart of India. Yay! <laughs> For this first trip, Laurie has gathered this pioneering group together from her own friends and contacts, some old, some new. She can be, both be very, um, very spiritual and very um, kind of aggressive. In Tantra, we use our sexual energy to fuel our bodies with our vital life force. Sometimes she'll tell you about your shit really clearly, just at the time when you really don't want to hear it. For men, they're usually shooting it out. And when they shoot it out, it robs them of their vital life force. So in Tantra, men learn to experience their sexual energy internally, like women already naturally do. So that's like having a full body orgasm and men can have that in Tantra. Yes, for women too. We're gonna squeeze two sets of muscles. One set of muscles are the anal sphincter muscles, which are the muscles in and around the anus. 
all of the group are here with self-improvement on their mind. They are hoping that, through Laurie, they'll be able to find some kind of enlightenment, starting here on the bus with some squeezing and breathing. And if you just would right now, see if you could squeeze them, like, without squeezing your buttocks. This is a nine-day quest for the real India and tantric transformation. Ooh, 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 ooh. And you can close your eyes so you don't feel so silly nobody's watching. Ooh, ooh. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Ooh, ah, ooh. Now get faster. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. First stop is Pushkar in the Rajasthani desert, famous for its holy lake, its camels, and its hippie culture. Here's the things to avoid discussing sex, salaries, poverty, beggars, famines, snake charmers, and widow burning. Don't discuss those with people that you meet. It's just not polite. That's customs that we might not understand. People here will look at us, some of us, as we're oddities. Like, they're not. By the way, they're not staring at our body parts, and it's not kind of lewd and licentious. They're just, like, looking at us, like, with curiosity. The group arrive at sundown for an early night before the first day of their tantric quest. Laurie is keen to provide as many life-changing experiences as possible. And so, the day starts pre-dawn to see the sun rise from this mountaintop. Wow. She has been running her butterfly workshops for 12 years, ever since uh, she had a life-changing experience herself brought about by Tantra. About mm, 1996, 97, I saw an astrologer and he said, oh, you could make a religion out of sex. And there I was, I went to Tantra and I went, this is it. And I was already in the business of transformation. That's what I was about. <sighs> Welcome to my current mountain. <laughs> I can't even climb. <laughs> Whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> I was very involved in things like gestalt therapy, bioenergetics. I was involved in the women's movement where I learned many different techniques. I learned emotional clearing back in the 70s. And then I became involved in what was then called the S training. And my teacher then was Warner Earhart. I learned many, many things about how people can have breakthroughs in their lives. And what I've done now is take the Tantra and put it and marry it with the transformational theory of having breakthroughs. So this is Shakti Shiva Mudra. So just watch me do it, it'll be like this. Scooping up earth, pushing out, opening up to heaven, and then, okay, it's like comes from Qigong, okay, all right, everybody, just exhale here, just like go inside for a minute, close your eyes, all right, good, and on the next inhale, scoop up earth, Pull it up to your heart and exhale out, pushing straight out, bending your knees slightly. Inhale, look up. Allow heaven to just fall into your heart. And this time, inhale, bring up. And as you push out from your heart, make the sound hue. Keep your eyes closed, just let your hands come gently down to your sides. Notice the energy in the third eye, and just notice your energy, and for anything swirling inside. And then when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Namaste.
Pushkar is often the foreigner's first stop out of Delhi and has a well-developed tourist industry with locals hardly batting an eyelid at these regular intruders. For our group, this is the first real taste of what certainly feels like the real India, offering opportunities for browsing, shopping and mixing with the locals. Pushkar Lake is one of the holiest places in the Hindu world. It is said to have grown from a lotus leaf that was dropped in the desert by Lord Brahma and is surrounded by ghats and temples. The Brahma temple is a very popular haunt with tourists and holy men alike. The Brahma temple was a fantastic experience. We loved going up to the Brahma temple and we picked up a little guide there and he took us around the temple and he explained things to us and he gave us flowers so we could dedicate them into the temple. We were coming from the temple and we had one man guide us through that and it was pleasant and then we were coming in pairs down to the water. I was so touched, I was crying. And the man said, no, this is not sad. I said, no, I'm, I'm crying, I'm so happy. Ahmed had warned everyone not to be separated. I got separated out, I didn't know. I was looking for Lori like a lost child. We were divided up by Brahmin priests. And I was going to stick with, I forget who was next to me, and they said, oh, no, 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 no. I wanted to sit next to somebody I knew. And they're like, no, no, sit by yourself. And they separated each one of us and said they would make many prayers for us, and then they would offer our things into the lake, and they, would want to, they wanted to charge us hundreds of dollars. Got a little nasty when uh, all I gave him was one American dollar. When he asked me for money, I gave him 10 rupees. And if he asked for, when he asked for more, I just said no. I he gave wanted... lots of money. <laughs> and was he happy with that? Yours Mine should have been. been happy. <laughs> I think I bought him a house. The priests say, you know, if you don't pay us, your family will not be healthy. He gave 20 US dollars for the both of us. However, uh, only his family got saved. So I offered him 50 rup uh, rupees. Rupees? Yeah. Rupees. <laughs> he said it wasn't enough. Well, the money to me didn't really mean anything because the people that I was doing it for were so much more valuable to me. Somebody paid someone a hundred bucks and somebody else paid 20 and a few people paid, you know, 10 rupees and there was all kinds of things going on there. We were definitely had. And one of the members of of our group said, you know, oh, let it go, you just got fucked in India, you know. I said, yeah, well, when I get fucked, I'm gonna have an orgasm, and I didn't have an orgasm. <laughs> so, is this the real India? <laughs> After a brief camel ride, it is time to hit the road to Jaipur, the capital of Rajasthan. Right now we're in Jaipur, the pink city. Today we're going to ride on elephants and we're going to go to some, a fort and we're going to go to some palaces. And I think people are going to see something that's just extraordinary. Jaipur has a wealth of tourist attractions, enough for several days of sightseeing in fact. Our tantric tourists have one day to cram it all in. This is going to be a very busy day. That is it for the famous Pink City, leaving the snake charmers somewhat bewildered. Next up, a Rajasthani museum, followed quickly by an astrological park. Uh, be careful, you might fall into like the stars, <laughs> which would be like falling into the unknown. Jaipur 
Junta Manta was built to illustrate how to use the stars for navigation. Guide Ashok shows how it is still incredibly accurate. Our man Delwood, as well as a tantric veteran, is also a gadget mad biochemist and enjoys pointing out to Ashok that he has a much better method for navigation. On the satellite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will <depend> four minutes. <laughs> yeah. but, but then again, that may be wrong, the 13, right, the offset. This way. <laughs> hmm. No one seems too impressed with Delwood's sat nav. Before lunch, there is just time to squeeze in a quick tantric breathing exercise. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I say this all the time, you're going to breathe anyway. So you might as well breathe and squeeze. In less than five minutes, you can make yourself happy at a red light. Okay, now everybody take a big inhale through the nose and tighten every muscle in your body as tight as you can. This is known as a charging breath, but more about breathing later. Hold it. With no time to digest lunch, the group arrive at the world-famous Amber Fort. One of Laura's key techniques is to keep the pace going, breaking down people's defenses in search of that elusive transformation. We're pushing people past their, you know, their capacity to stop and rest, whatever, we're just going. <laughs> Pace picking up and the heat now blazing hot, the trip is already turning into a marathon endurance test. Oh boy. Look at this mountainside. Whoa! Randall Rodriguez and Marie York are traveling together with Randall's son Ryan. Recently widowed, Randall met Marie on a self-improvement course, and aside from Delwood, they are the most experienced tantrics in the group, open to every new experience on offer. Marie is a very good student. She's very keen on doing the practices, and keep, she keeps distinguishing what's new. You know, like the layers, the onion skin peeling off, what keeps happening new in her life, what keeps happening. Take off the glasses, you look to America. I was given a schedule and I haven't even looked at it because I really don't care. I'm not carrying a watch. It's been a, a unique opportunity because I don't like tours. Oh my God, look at all those tours bus. And we were on one of those. Oh, look at these mud toppers. Are they untouchables? Once at the top, Lari has taken the group straight into the Kali temple to take part in a ceremony devoted to Kali, the goddess of destruction. For reasons of religious discretion, we are not allowed to shoot the ceremony itself, but we can show you the aftermath. Well, I was not prepared for that. That was, that was amazing. The sound, the vibration went through my entire body. And the Kali goddess is the destruction of everything to be reborn. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm on the journey. And I felt that. To us, because we're Tantra students, and because people here, we're so open to what India is offering us that it's as if as we move through India, it's like an entire ashram. The whole country is an ashram for each of us. And there was a lot of noise and banging of cymbals and bells and dogs. And Lori kind of oriented us on how to behave before we got in there. And then uh, during the ceremony, it just began to feel very familiar to me. And I don't, I don't know what this sadness is. I just. I mean, I already believed that I lived in India before. Um, I don't have any, like, memory pictures yet of other, you know, where I live. 
But I just know I have a strong connection to Kali. Destroying everything of who I am, what I am, to be reborn as into a higher level of consciousness. And are you happier now? <laughs> yes, I'm happier now. I can hardly believe it. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, We're not the regular tourists. That, that tour guides are used to dealing with. We, we're coming, we're bringing something, and maybe what we're bringing is an openness and a surrender to be contributed to by all of India. So that's, you understand? Exactly. So it seems that the trip is already beginning to stimulate some kind of transformation amongst the group. And most welcome to Jaipur. Welcome, welcome to see Puppet Show. People are switching who their roommates are every couple days. Why are they doing musical rooms? So, so in case anyone thinks someone's a dud, they don't get stuck with them for too long. They're above average people, I will say too. For first time, in this age, Americans, I will give them above average as a customer. Jaipur, day four. Today is the long road to Agra, home of the Taj Mahal. What is your name? My name is Dara Singh. Dara Singh. Company Nupa Travel. Nupa Travel. Actually, we are belong from Punjab. My mummy daddy doing agriculture. Only I am one man live in Delhi and 15 years to driving and then two bus by. So now we are everybody happy. Tourists more coming and then we have more money coming. Jaipur to Agra is another day of hard driving on mainly very narrow, very bumpy roads. To take their minds off the road ahead, Laurie relaxes everyone with a selection from her portfolio of tantric breathing exercises, warming everyone up with a yogic pranayama breath. Next comes a transmutation breath, using sound to center the various chakras. Tantra to me is energy. I, I know in my life, I don't breathe. I mean, if you boil it down to the very simplest, simplest factors, it's a matter of squeezing and breathing. Feeling energy moving throughout your body, feeling spirit coming down and through the body, feeling sexual energy coming up through the body. The basis for a lot of Tantra is using the breath in combination with the right sphincter muscles, something that Delwood has been practicing successfully for 10 years with often spectacular results. Push your belly. What What that means is, when you're doing this, your mind's going to be thinking things. Oh, no. Next on the menu is the mother of all breathing exercises, dynamic meditation. It involves three stages, movement, release, and silence. On the exhale. First off, Laurie uses advanced charging breath to build energy. is dynamic release, often called speaking gibberish. Stop. Speaking 
stage of the meditation is 10 minutes of complete silence. Sound has a tremendous effect on the body. It, it liberates things that are blocked. So once we build a sexual charge, we are able to liberate things that are stored in the what's called the lower chakras, the sexual area of the body. It's partly feeling the breathing, the connection, the, the, the opening the heart, the feeling just like love bubbling throughout the body. After a few hours of breathing exercises, the group are ready for some fresh air. Bird watching is not a traditionally tantric activity, but this must be getting closer to the real India. And I actually thought, I don't think I'm gonna make it through the next, maybe, I, I was just wondering, how am I possibly going to make it? I don't have any essential oils, no, you know, no Febreze or anything. Well, today I just felt like we were seeing the real India with all those fields and farms and people working the land, and it's so cool. Next stop is Fatipur Sikri. However, things are now running very late. By the time the group get to the temples, the sun is low in the sky. Fatipur Sikri predates the Taj Mahal by a hundred years and is often overlooked by the tourist hordes who rush straight to the Taj. Our group has time for a whirlwind visit. The temples were built by Akbar the Great, who formed the new religion Din Ilahi, which tried to reconcile Islam and Hinduism with other faiths, including Christianity. The at Fatipur is electric, but the tantric schedule is beginning to take its toll on some of the group who struggle to keep up. Only 2,300 rupees. Oh, wow, okay. The 
the journey into Agra itself takes another good few hours, getting our weary travelers to the hotel at precisely midnight. Bumtas was the bride of Shah Jihan. She was pregnant with her 14th child to him, and she rode into battle with him while pregnant. So she sacrificed her life to go with her husband, who she adored. And during battle, she went into childbirth and died. And her last request was to build her a temple. Everyone in the group is feeling the effects of the long day yesterday, but as they watch the sunrise, nothing can dampen the power of this extraordinary place. The perfect place, in fact, for an impromptu tantric exercise. And feel the energy between your hands. And then push back in. Pulling the feminine energy up. And then putting your hands over and exhaling, bringing the male energy down. And just notice how you feel. Close your eyes. And now we'll do three Egyptian cleansing breaths. So we're going to be inhaling, and when we come down, we're going to pow down. So inhale up. Turn your hands over, and ready, and pow! Two more. The energy of the Taj is impossible to put into words. So much so, it inspires Laurie and Delwood into a tantric kiss. It was lovely to have everybody here. People were very moved by it. And then also it was frustrating because people were like running all over the place. Um, I guess it was so exciting that people, they couldn't contain themselves, which, why should they? They're tantric. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> it looked like this amazing structure on a, on a barge coming forward right in right to you and it was just mind-blowing. It was stunning, it took my breath away, I broke out in tears. I was moved to tears that there is the possibility of that much love in the world. This is, building represents probably one of the greatest um, representations of love. It's just, it's amazing. This is just a wonderful, wonderful tribute. It's really beautiful. I didn't hear much of the history except for some chopping of hands and blindness to make sure the workers didn't build it again. I think I have completed my half century here. <laughs> More than half century. <laughs> really? I came first time when I was five years old. That is almost 25 years back. This was very beautiful then. This is my first wonder of the world. I've never, I've never been to any other wonders. But it's, 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 um, it's beyond words. Uh, the symmetry of it and the old marble and how it's inlaid. Um, I mean, there's so many different stories about jewels, semi-precious jewels, um, and being inside where the tombs were. I mean, it's wonderful to have that kind of love. The butterfly is flapping her Taj Mahal wings. Flap, 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 flap. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm acclimating to the food. It's uh, doing a number on me, but I'm acclimating to the food. I'm pretty much a carnivore, so these tidbits of chicken are kind of like throwing scraps to the dogs, but uh, I'm making do. Tomorrow is Varanasi. We are in the very beautiful town of India. I think this is the most exciting part for me, to take you people to Varanasi, to see this place. By, by train. Hundred days. Hello, sandals now. One hundred sir. Sir, different dress color sir. Extra large, extra large, extra large, extra large, extra large. Six piece, the large.
Tonight, the group leave the confines of their protective womb-like coach to engage in that most Indian of Indian experiences, a train journey to Varanasi. Indian trains are legendary for being overcrowded and hot. The group are now beginning to feel nervous about where they will sleep, what they will eat, and other such essentials. Where did you get that? Um, right after we checked in, Andrea and I went down and just cased the joint, you know, see if we wanted to buy anything today. Have you got anything to um, use it with? No, I'm looking. Do you have any idea what's a reasonable price? Next to nothing. Next to nothing? Yeah, I mean, you don't need much, do you? No, like so obviously you don't one part. Huh? You can probably take yeah. your own. Yeah, you can take your own. Is there a liquor store near between the temple and the train? Alcohol. Spirits. Yeah, that's fine. I just, some people at will help them probably go to sleep on the train. Yeah. You know. <laughs> After its final stop at a liquor store, the coach prepares to depart leaving the group exposed to the perils of the night. We were told to be very, very careful in the train station. There were bad men who would come and touch us. They would touch the women on their private parts. Bye, namaste. Tantra is the feminine aspect. It's about chaos and the unknown. Yo, 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 yo. I don't know if they understand yo. <laughs> All right, everyone, protect your titties. <laughs> Look at this, a dog is running on the train track. The first train to arrive is a false alarm, but it certainly gets the adrenaline levels surging. I'm going to go pee in this train. There's no toilet. Can I pee? Oh, my God, the guy is going off on another train to pee. What if it takes off while he's peeing? with his thing in his hands. <laughs> hey, Randall, we're in India. Hey, Catherine, we're in India. <laughs> Do you feel looked after? Today? Yeah. Yeah, yes and no. It's a little bit hairy now, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. You'll like the train once you get on it. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. It's not as bad. It's... It won't be like that last one. Well, God, I hope not. I was thinking Auschwitz, you know? <laughs> you are. Well, that, that's what it looked like. Oh, my gosh. And finally, the train came, and we had just a few moments to get on. And we all got on, and we got all mixed up. Just act crazy. They won't touch you. No one will touch you if you either act empowered or crazy. Some of us didn't know our bunk numbers. Some of us didn't know where our luggage was. We had all these porters. And they just put everything on, and it was a mess. We were just all over the place. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> In all the excitement, possibly due to nerves, or maybe the large amount of rum consumed by the tour leader, some of the bags appear to have gone missing. Where is his bed? Over there, down there? Yeah. All right, well, we can't... OK. Where is the one you said was Andrea's? Let her go. How are we going to do that? No. <laughs> Real girls, no movie, please. They're missing their bags. No, they're not. Catherine found hers. She's missing now. What color? What kind? It's here. I'm sure it is. Catherine, we think we've got everything. We just some people don't have their wits about them because our guide is a little three sheets to the wind right now. Hold on. You take this. Take this. She can't. She can't. She can't. Rolling. It's rolling right over me. I'm so sorry. That's all right, and she, we have to get out of the way. Whose is this? This is your bag, I know. I need Carol. 
<laughs> this is like the Marx Brothers, and this is like Abbott and Costello rolled into one. <laughs> it's hysterical. We have no idea where we are. We have no idea where our luggage is. And we do at the same time. Have you got yours? I do. How many times have to tell them? Oh, I don't know. They just keep looking at me and this saying they this. don't know. Ouch. So everybody's clear with their seat numbers? Clear as water, these two. Because these are people of ours and they need to be sleeping there. No more rum. Finally, all the bags are located and everyone settles down for a rocking and rolling night of sleep. Or not. The Indian railway community wakes up very early, so it's the second dawn rise in a row. Self-made millionaireess Helen Varble is used to these pressing hours. Other members of the group are beginning to feel the pace. Last night was a bit of bedlam. We had a pretty good cocktail hour on the uh, waiting tracks, but uh, then it kind of went downhill from there And the fact that we weren't really into the knowing of what was going on. Oh, last night was an experience. Uh... I think the class we ended up in was a little bit less than what we expected. The accommodations were not quite what we had fantasized about the Orient Express going through India. They're about a couple notches lower than that. It's a completely different from riding Amtrak back in the States. Well, I was sick yesterday for most of the day. I'm broad enough that I didn't fit in the bed in either direction, <clears throat> so it was a little uncomfortable. Well, and, and so I woke up and it seemed like the train had been stopped and I looked around and, and the place where Randall had been, he wasn't no longer in that place and I thought that everyone had left. Oh, I kept waking up, yeah, I kept falling out. And I had this moment of, oh, I, I fell asleep and sat on the train. But it turned out everyone was still here. The train journey certainly seems to have brought a kind of resilience in some of the group, who seem more than happy in their new surroundings, embracing the unknown with a smile and a shrug. Nobody knew where they were supposed to sleep or where to put their luggage. Um, but it all worked out eventually, the way things in India do. We're getting where we need to go, so, you know, that's the name of the game. There seems to have been a shift in the group dynamic this morning. Could this be the transformation that Laurie has been looking for? And could this be the real India? to Varanasi at 9.30 in the morning, and around 9 in the morning, they let us know that the train would be a few hours late. We were on the train forever. The food was terrible. I had no idea how raw of an experience it was going to be. First, I couldn't imagine sleeping here. It just looked like a little scuzzy to me. I slept fine, actually. When I actually laid down, I just fell asleep. I'm ready to get off this train. I have a bit of claustrophobia, so this is not so much fun for me. <laughs> well, we've been on the train for hours now. We started at about 10 o'clock last night, and it's now... Uh, Almost 1.30 in the afternoon. We should have been there hours ago to Varanasi. I slept very well. I know some members of my group didn't sleep well at all. I know Randall didn't even fit in the bed. And I'm sorry about that, but I also think this is typically an Indian experience. And the trains are guaranteed to go late. 
And I think it's an opportunity to surrender. It's like to be able to embrace what really is as opposed to resist it or try to make it something else. How can you make a train or a schedule something else? Oh my God, we have to get on. <laughs> Bye. At three o'clock, they finally roll into Varanasi. The train journey has turned into a pilgrimage and the group, although uplifted by the experience, are well and truly shattered. The train was long, and we had five meals, and they were all the same. It was rice and curry. Stone cold. It was really long, 18 hours, that's, that's long. We were six and a half hours late. It's a very conscious uh, seminar technique, okay, where you extend people early in the morning to late at night, past their limits, because then we start breaking down all the resistance barriers and then some information might finally get in. Being tired is a key element. So in weakening their defenses, even in getting a little sick, I mean, they start to get open to a myriad of things and surrender to a myriad of things that they wouldn't surrender to ordinarily. Yeah, that train ride was perfect. I feel a little annoyance here and there, but I'm just trying to let it go, just release. As a tired and emotional group goes ahead to the hotel, Laurie does some serious planning. Tomorrow is not only dawn on the Ganges, it is also her birthday. People got a little high today, little high I felt. There was something different. Generally, I think sunrises are highly overrated because I like to sleep in. But this was extraordinary. And if I were here, this is what I would do on a regular basis. It was very spiritual to see that the Ganga is the lifeblood of India. I mean, we all know how we're going to end. We're all going to die. But to have it, to be so present and in your face that this is the way it ends. This is your, you know, life and then death. And it's just right in your face. It's a very mysterious city, like some people, it's, it has all energies, very bad energies and very good energies. Hey, we're eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the Ganga. 
No one else can claim that. <laughs> PBJ on my birthday. The Ganges on the boat. That was really powerful. Until the hawkers came. I want to see these two. I like these. How much your prayer beads? This one, 200. 200 too much. All the tourists were on the boat, and all the, all the natives were in the water. The water is, the river is the goddess, Ganga Ji. All right, so here, everybody, look, you're going you're gonna to see people bathing here. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lord. On the Ganga. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> there are the little butterfly prayers. Flap, 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 flap. Ram Ram Sa. <laughs> As evening falls, it is back to the river. Hindus travel thousands of miles to Varanasi to cremate their relatives on the burning ghats or to spread their ashes on the river. Religious pilgrims join together here every evening for the fire puja, and this is where we find our tantric tourists. Seven priests, symbolizing the seven chakras, spent over an hour performing this puja on the banks of the river Ganges. Defenses already broken by the train journey, most of the group have no option but to surrender to the raw emotive power of the Ganges before taking part in a much more familiar ritual. Says Laurie on it. Well, okay, we shall have cake. As Marie Antoinette said once, let them eat cake. <sighs> okay. I started my birthday today on the Ganga. I'm finishing my birthday today on the Ganga. Of course, we're having champagne a little later, but right now, this was the champagne of spirit. Next stop, the Kama Sutra temples of Kajuraho. Local guide, Kajirahu, born and bred Sipu, is at the airport to meet Lori and the group. Welcome to Kajirahu. My name is Sipu. And Kajirahu is the city of Tantra. Well, I met him in Kajirahu. Of course, he was my guide. He propositioned me, and I thought it was hysterical. The group people are nice, you know. Everyone is different, you know. And it's nice. Unbeknownst to the rest of the group, Lori already knows Sipu from her previous visit to Kajuraho. Sipu was my lover, at least was, and I'm thinking still wants to be. And yet, I can feel the disappointment in him that I'm here with my group and he's not with me. And um, I've told him, I mean, he's a kid, he's a young, young man. And I've told him that I don't want him to ever suffer because of me. And I want him to grow from having been with me, which I know he has already. We were in Goa together. Well, the three of us were in Goa together last year. I mean, really, he is half my age. And I thought, oh, what am I doing? And then I thought, I'm tantric, who cares? So what do you say, chicken tikka? Chicken tikka, rice. 
Laurie, much to the disappointment of her lover, bows out of any further action for today, leaving Sipu in control of the group. And everyone's kind of feeling the fatigue. Their bodies are starting to give out with colds and coughs and hacks and all different types of things showing up. I have lower back pain. I think I need a chiropractic adjustment. Um, some t in the evenings I have neck pain. Should we pick breakfast? There's grilled chunks of chicken, onion, half a pen, tomato, cooked on a skewer. Can I just have like chicken? Just cooked chicken? That would be tandoori. Chicken tikka, chicken tandoori. Yeah, but they put all the sauces and spices. Indian food has never been on my high list of, of favorite foods. Thai, uh, Chinese, barbecue, but not Indian. And sometimes I just want a vegetable that looks like a vegetable, that tastes like a vegetable, that's not been cooked for three days, it's not floating in some type of curry sauce. Just chicken. On the last leg of the tour, these are exceptionally tired tantric tourists. So, the final day, the climax of the Heart of India Tantric Tour. The 1100-year-old Kama Sutra temples of Kajiraho, the Tantric Mecca. So, you go on the outside of the temples and you look at everything that's possible in the carnal world, in the material world, the riches and the bodily pleasures. And then when you go inside the temple, the temple is like a large yoni only being female genitalia. You go in, and there's almost nothing. It's almost empty, with possibly one god in there. Okay. <laughs> Thousands of carvings depicting the act of love and beyond give the group the lift they need. You can see her breast, they doesn't look like a real breast. They look like her breast is exaggerated. <laughs> That's why we call her with a new name. What? Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Soundtrack sex is so different. It's like some kind of magic. You know, it's some kind of magic. And it's almost like a drug experience. We get used to it, we just get open, you know. And just, it's because of the temple, which is nicer, you know. It's not in a hurry to... <laughs> oh, yes, I was hoping you'd ask me that. <laughs> yes, that was at Esalen. Um, I had only read about it. Having sex for an hour or two is more common than having sex for five minutes. The word sexual was too small. The man is inside the woman, but you're only moving enough to maintain an erection. I mean, it was cosmic. Being, sometimes being slow, sometimes being fast, but taking, taking time. Musicians would, in that day would have said Cosmosville. I think probably one or two people have hooked up on this trip. Yeah. In that sharing of rooms, musical room, I think some people probably hooked up. I've been looking for people, partners, to experience and, 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 and work through um, the practices, but I've not been successful. As far as the whole uh, tantric sex of, of, you know, the bliss and enlightenment state and all that, I, I have to say, no, I haven't, okay? But I'll continue to experiment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I feel like I've made some nice connections. Well, I don't have much sex, so I don't use Tantra much in sex. 
I use Tantra with myself all the time and in self-sex, but I don't really have many partners. Where is Sipu? He left? He left. After lunch, Sipu has arranged a surprise for the group. A real-life Indian village with cows on the street and children everywhere. After taking so much from India, the group are ready to give something back, even if it's just sweets bought from the local village shop. It's great to have the privilege to come into a school. I used to teach kids this, this age. Long before I was a Tantra teacher, I taught kids. <laughs> if the Kama Sutra temples provided the tantric climax to the trip, could this village be the other half? Could this be the real India? The school is only a recent addition to the village, relies on donations to keep going and accepts all children. And tourists, apparently. Actress Catherine meets the head of the school and confronted with this sudden reality, she is now in floods of tears. He's seeing the people, they're so poor. They seem happy. Like, how could you be happy with cow dung? Catherine certainly seems to be a changed person, but what of the rest of the group? Very nice boy. <laughs> Lovers Sipu and Lori have hardly had a moment alone. This is only the second time they have met, and understandably, tensions are running a little high. Anywhere, right? Amit's job, however, is almost over, and he is in a philosophical mood. So I feel very comfortable. The tour has been a good success, I will say. A little bit problem always happened with the group, but overall it's a very successful trip, and people learn a lot. And they're happy because they're doing little charity in a right manner. I told them not to give money to the kids. For me? Hey, for, for no, me. no, no. Hello. But one thing I want to tell you very importantly, the people that you see here are not so much village people. Because they are seeing you for many years. Many Western people are coming for the last 10, 15 years this village. So it's a India, but not in a very real way. Real or not, the group have certainly seen India. Quite a lot of it, in fact. The mark of success for Lori, however, is, has anyone changed? She has one final opportunity to squeeze that extra bit of transformation from these tantric tourists. Take another breath. <sighs> and just give yourself a little hug. You've made it this far. You did an amazing job in India. You were spectacular. We're in India. Just let any feelings you have come. It's good, it just means that you're open to letting the whole thing flow. When you started on this trip, who showed up in India? You know who you were then. And just get aware of what changes you've allowed yourself to come through. Just keep noticing inside. And then when you're ready, slowly, slowly open your eyes to gaze upon the face of a god or goddess. Very nice. When you get there, close your eyes. Just check in. There's nothing you have to do except be present. Keep breathing. All right, very slowly open your eyes to gaze on the face of a new god or goddess, a new divine one. Beautiful. Keep breathing, you're doing great. Allowing themselves to be seen. And the outside circle then move one more to the left. People are starting to come together as a group. Of 
I think I've learned a lot about patience. Well, I'm going to be a lot sweeter to my Indian lover. who <laughs> He thinks I don't acknowledge him enough. But now I understand why, you know. And I realize everything in those paintings is, is India. Those, those sacred white cows are right here. The, the trees are, all those little trees, the leaves are here. Everything, it's like, it's come to life for me. My, my favorite things are actually here. I love it. I'm really excited to do more workshops with her and read and study more. So in that sense, I feel like the transformation has begun. Your right hand is down. Yes. And you're putting over. You're not touching, but you're putting the hands over. And give thanks. I noticed that you really look people in the eye and, and, and meet their soul more. At home, there's a bit of a veil. I find India to be like a, a treasure hunt. I mean, in the morning, I'm just I'm really excited to get up because you never know what treasure is going to unfold. Because we only know little fragments, you know, it's just like the, the little bits of, that are left of a culture that's so old. There's a sweetness that comes with um, being vulnerable. We're so far from it now. You know, this is a thousand years old. I'm going to take off my mask that I'm a big, strong woman. I don't need love. I don't need anybody.